Hello everyone. Um, I'm back with a, a really quick video because this is a deck that's been around for a while. But if you're new to my channel, um, I'm Mad Witch and thank you for joining me. It's um, I'm not doing a huge amount of videos to be fair, but um, I I kind of wanted to go over a few of the decks that I've had for a long time because we're so busy if looking for the next deck, tarot deck, that one or that special one or just to add to our collection. And I think sometimes I forget that I have some really lovely decks in my collection. And I thought it would be really nice to to show you this deck again some uh give it some love some appreciation it is um it's been around for years uh i've had it for at least three um everyone's going to know it. it it is the eight coins tattoo tarot and it's by lana uh zell no sorry couldn't remember the surname um the deck is for me it's a very very sassy deck she is a very sassy deck. She has her own voice and she decided that I needed to work with her. Um, and I think this came about for several reasons. Um, I was very lucky or rather surprised actually that a lovely guy um, on Facebook by the name of Brooklyn Tommy took a picture that I had up there and he redid it and it, he basically immortalized me it, it, with a vampire kiss I think in this gorgeous um, uh, recreation of my photo and it kind of reminded me that I haven't been in my power lately at all and the strength of that power is the sassiness in me. And then that reminded me of um, how much I, I love my craft, my witchcraft, my, my tarot. And this deck was shouting at me that it wanted to be part of that. And... Um, the book is lovely. I don't have the box. I'll have it somewhere, but I don't have it. I, I made about, I mean, you can see how many years ago this was my first kind of creation of bags. Look how they've changed. But actually, I thought, oh, I could redo that. And I, I, I might, I might, I might. But I also think, actually, I really love that material. And it's a nice, easy bag. It just, it can go in my handbag. The book is lovely. Um, she she talks very much about her um the reason this deck came about was because she was a budding tattoo artist and it was you know part of her her creation to do her artwork in you know this this deck i don't know she's still an, a tattoo artist i don't know i haven't looked her up the deck is still available um it, it's a really nice book um I love some of the things that she says. Um, I love the way she keeps referring to her personal journey. She didn't paint the cards from, you know, the full right the way through. She she picked the cards or went with her intuition. Um, and I thought that was such a nice way of doing, um, especially... As a, an artist, I, I use that word very loosely with me, but um, sometimes you have to be inspired. If you, you, what, you can't just pick up the pen and the paper and just do it. You have to, it's got to come from somewhere else inside of you. Um, and I think that's, you know, one of the things that I really uh, love about creators of tarot is that wonderful inspiration that comes from what they create and that's why this is a Rider Waite Smith um, many of you know that I'm not always the first person to go with Rider Waite but it, it it you read the deck as it was meant to be or you take um the, the pictures and you go with your intuition I love it when 
a creator talks about their deck because then you know what you're you're seeing through their eyes in a way and I love some of the the names I mean we've got dance with death we've got the lady wears wolf head it, it's just a lovely lovely uh, book as I say I've got a video of this up already but I wanted to come back to it and celebrate it the card the book um has color images and you know they that's always lovely and look at the size of them you can really see the detail i love what uh, is written about them i couldn't i would have cut off the um, the tabs actually but the words are printed on the other side as well so that's not very easy to do so i couldn't do that anyway um as i say i don't want this to be a very long video but i thought it would be really nice if we just went back and appreciated some of these older decks and I cut the borders off of mine and I edged it in red. Um, it lends itself perfectly, as you can see, because um, the borders, this is the mass produced deck. Now, I th believe there is an indie deck that went before it, but I sadly don't have it. But I understand it might have been smaller. I'm not I'm not absolutely sure anyway. So um, so f just for the purposes of just actually loving uh tarot i've been very preoccupied lately with my witchcraft i've been getting back into tarot and i kind of just thought it would be really nice to remind myself um about these lovely decks and to to share them you know with you and they're not in order because i've been using it but i thought we would just you know appreciate the artwork um for what it is this is a deck, as I said, it's a very sassy deck, but this is a deck that does not take prisoners any more than I do. <laughs> and this is, th this has no filter. This deck is um, really special. It does talk beautifully, but it gets right to the point and it doesn't want to hold back, which is I think I don't think I can get any closer really, but you can get a really good um, feel for the artwork. It's just I've had this come up a few times, and it's in her in her book as well as one of the first ones that she did. Um, so yeah, and it's it's probably one that I would have a backup of if. I could but I, I think that's just so beautiful look at that that's the six of swords um, I always look for the six of swords in a deck um, and often you do see a boat but you often see people in it for the Rider Waite Smith imagery and um, I just think that's equally beautiful the colours are really gorgeous in this deck I had that to reason. Death of the ego, that is for me. I will draw one of the cards, Eight of Cups, another card that is often uh, depicted as somebody walking away from a situation. Um, or it could be walking to a situation, I suppose. That's something else. Um, when I got this deck out, it really wanted to get straight in it's a lovely card it's a lovely deck to um shuffle but it, because i took the borders off and I, i'm like quite a few other people i do like to have so that my cards can um sit together and make a like a storyboard i'm just gonna try and swap hands for a second guys because holding the phone is not really that easy Isn't she lovely? A beautiful full card. It's just such lovely imagery, lovely colours, lovely warm. It's got really strong energies. It's it's just um, it's a real kind of kick-ass kind of deck. I think she's amazing. Um, and then you know you, there is other things you know you can see other 
some of them have got um uh symbols in there that you know you you can look quite closely and find details um <laughs> the, the the devil's in the detail but yeah this is you know just me really wanting to share I, this is one of my absolute favorite cards in this deck i think it is so powerful it doesn't really need anything said about it i just i just find it really strong and powerful um i'm just going to quickly see if i can uh, find it so that i can just read what it says about it um i won't do that with anymore because like i say i really did want to keep this as a very um uh short video but um the five of swords is about self-interest greed selfishness and deception it reminds us to think of others and ha and see how our actions may be affecting them this card brings to discussion our human desire to think only of ourselves rather than those who are close to us the group the society as a whole two hands rise up from below a dark body of water the hands are possessing three swords and pulling the two remaining swords into their grip two dark figures retreat up a golden stairway and into the clouds an eye in the cloud shows us that the people are crying devastated by the act of selfishness that has left them helpless their tears flow into a waterfall that fills the sea and rises the depths of the dark water below. It's just really, it's just a powerful image and I, I just, I think it was, oh, look at the colours, the vibrancy of these colours is just, so yeah, I've got a couple of decks that um. I've had for a long time this one and the circle of life and um they I, I mean I've been very lucky I've been I have a lot of decks and I have been spoiled and I had a few for my birthday which I haven't even got to yet which is another reason why I'm glad that I'm kind of just looking at some of my older decks um and this one really should never have been um, left on the shelf. <laughs> you know, I mean, I've, I've worked with it, but I haven't worked with it as much as I should have done. Love that. She's gorgeous. So what's a sassy deck for you? I mean, my fox, my beautiful familiar fox who Ashu comes and sits in the garden and they look like um, dahlias to me. So another gorgeous flower for the garden. I love this. I keep saying that. But what's a sassy deck for you? Look at that. That's the nine of swords. And that's what I mean about the symbols on, on the wrists. And that's another very provocative image. And, and I know swords do lend themselves to that, but... Um, yeah, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous way of, of um, creating art with tattoo images. It's just such a nice idea. Um, so, yeah, so as I was saying, what is your sassy deck? What deck has no filter and doesn't care? Well, it does care. I don't find this deck uncaring. I think it's very caring. I think it cares about me. And it makes no bones about telling me what I need to know. And that's not a bad thing. And this, the, the message that this, this deck had for me was that I need to get back into my power. Um, and I needed to find that deep, strong magic in me. I, I work with humour um, a lot. Oh, look at that. And... Um, it masks quite a lot that goes on under the surface. But I'm resilient and I'm strong and I'm a woman of discerning, <laughs> okay, maybe not discerning, of, of many years who who needs <laughs> to, um, 
think that's really powerful too. To uh, uh, really tap into the strength of the crone. Um, it's an image, the crone, I think, that is um, often undervalued because the it's not the glamorous image necessarily but i kind of want to change that we know what this card is don't we the three of um swords is the sort of heartbreak card always the one that niggles me a bit with the heart but i i can't find fault with that i just think that's a beautiful image so yeah, crone energy is something that I think is a very powerful um, a, a part of being a woman of a certain age. And it's sometimes really important that as women, we boost other women to feel that strength and that power and not feel like they're losing their importance if their children are grown or they're getting older and everything gets a bit creaky and you know gravity kicks in um, we have uh, an obligation to uh, support each other and to be there for the mothers and the young maidens who are you know going through the younger cycles and i i like that idea i i feel empowered not by um being a know-it-all because i know less now than i did when i was born I, i've made that many mistakes um but it's not about that it's a it's kind of about embracing your age embracing that lovely time when you can be a little bit more in your own power a little bit stronger in your opinions i've always been strong in my opinions i'm unfiltered apparently um and but i would rather hear unfiltered truth than lies um i would rather people spoke bluntly um without you don't you don't need to be harsh or cruel but you you know you have to walk your truth and that's something that's another card i love in this deck um i think when you get older it's really it's kind of now or never isn't it if you don't walk your talk now well you're gonna run out of you know time and the Empress card has come up for me so many times and I was in the year of the Empress last year um, but when I reached 57 somebody said to me well if you think about it add the numbers together you get three um, and that's kind of true because you get 12 and then one and two is three so I'm still kind of in the energy of the Empress and in the energy of um, sovereignty. So, so yeah, so I think what this deck had to say to me was own your power, be strong in it, be grateful of it, be gentle with it, be gentle with yourself. Um, nurture yourself protect your yourself because I'm quite a porous person I tend to absorb other people's energies really easily even people I think you know that I just meet on the street I, I'm I don't I've never been aware of how to protect myself I think that's such a beautiful card look at that so I think it's really important that as we get older we do nurture ourselves, that we do take that time to just um, be comfortable with who we are. What a lovely card to finish on, the Hermit, which is my card, um, the Virgo card. And I I am a Hermit uh, most of the time. I'm very solitary and I like it that way. I like to chat to other witches. I love to be it 
empowering of other people. I love to think that um, by the words that I use or um, the way that I inspire some people is is my service um, in my craft because I'm I'm not a, a a very dynamic witch in other ways. So I hope that with words and encouragement, my power is in making other fit people feel good because I think we we need that every day. Um, so that's it, guys. That was my very quick video that ended up at 20 minutes long. But um, I, I just love the old decks. I think we forget sometimes we've got them on that shelf. And I hope that this will encourage you guys to go and have a rummage, find one of those decks that you haven't used for a very long time and celebrate it. And I will be posting on Instagram and um I've updated my profile pictures everywhere with the lovely one that Brooklyn Tommy did for me because I feel um, immortalised. <laughs> oh, right. I get, anyway, guys, have a wonderful day. Whatever you're doing, wherever you are, take care. Bye.